Hey y'all, it's Jen. Welcome back. And if you're new here, I love making videos on mixed media, junk journaling, and collage techniques. If that's your kind of thing, consider subscribing and liking this video and also checking me out uh, at my Instagram account for more inspiration. I am so stoked about today's project. You're not going to believe what I use to make a junk journal. It's the cutest thing. You're going to learn so much today. I'm going to cover how to illustrate a design by yourself. I'm also going to go over making an easy spine for a junk journal and how to put together signatures for a beginner, namely a pamphlet stitch. So what are you waiting for? Let's do this thing. So here it is. I found these XO signs at the Dollar Tree and they're like a thin particle board. You're going to need chalk paint, sandpaper, brushes, and your favorite paints. I started to sand down the glitter part, but the glitter just wasn't coming off. So I decided to paint the back side. That would make it easier. I'm just going to put some scrapbook paper on the other side. When I let that dry, I look through my favorite children's uh, illustrated books, uh, vintage ones, and I just took out elements um, of houses that I enjoyed. I'm not copying per se a whole entire house from these books. I'm just looking and observing and finding my favorite features in these buildings and houses. Sometimes I, I draw and copy the whole thing, but that's just to get used to drawing it, get a feel for it. I add my own embellishments when they come to mind. But later on, I'm just going to take little elements to piece together my own house. The thing with illustration is you can't come up with things straight from your mind unless you've experienced those things or if you've observed them somehow. So using references is really important in illustration and we shouldn't beat ourselves up and say that we don't know how to, how to draw. So it, all the great artists copied um, in their career and learned from their mentors and their favorite illustrators. So as long as you don't copy exactly what other illustrators do and you kind of give your own flourishes and embellishments, you'll be great. So again, I'm just getting, grabbing a few things out of these books and whenever I can, I'm changing things around and adding my own little features. Here, I just made rounded petal shapes instead of uh, triangular shapes that were used in the book. And I put dots around, so that was different for this door. So you're gonna wanna just look through a few vintage books or whatever books inspire you to get some ideas. I'm really bad about drawing houses, so that's what I need help with. I need to find references on houses. So again, I'm just getting different roof styles, window styles, um, the bottom uh, foundation parts, windows. And now I'm, I'm kind of making an outline of my uh, tag shape and I'm going to try to put together uh, a sample house out of all these elements. This isn't my final product. You'll see that in a minute, but this is just me here playing around and doodling. Um, very rough draft and I start over new pages and I keep updating and changing. So you just want to keep playing and if you don't like something you can start over. You can also trace over things that you already made that you like uh, to, to start over, you know, and then add uh, new things that you like. So I'm just putting together a window here and just again playing with the notes I already took. And this is what I find my final version. But what I noticed is that I drew it too big and my tag is not that big enough to hold all those elements. Uh, I then started to paint some pages that are going to go into my journal. I made this really super easy by just mixing the paint colors that I want. I made them match the cover, uh, the colors that I plan to have on the cover. So I just quickly painted, rough, roughly painted those pages. And that's how you can make your own um, journal and paper, mixed media paper. You don't have to buy scrapbook paper to make these. And you can get drawing paper from Dollar Tree. And uh, okay, so I started out by painting the tags, the house color that I wanted, but I thought it was too yellow and I wanted to lighten it up a little bit. So here I'm mixing some paint to make it a lighter cream color and you have to sand your um, tags after you paint the chalk paint on them. The reason why I use chalk paint is so that the, this acrylic paint will actually um, take hold to the tag because I think the tags have kind of a plasticky um, 
cover on them. I'm not really sure, but it's it definitely helps things stick. You can also try sanding it and just adding a couple layers of your paint. So now I'm just gonna go through here and show you a little uh, snippets of me painting. And with acrylic paint, it gets it takes some getting used to. You wanna try to use thin strokes. You don't wanna get gl too globby. You want to kind of spread it out and make it into a matte texture and it takes a couple coats so don't get discouraged when the first layer is sort of transparent it could also be um, a matter of what kind of paints you use i just use inexpensive paint um, apple barrel and yeah that's that's what i use and i'm going to be experimenting with dollar tree paint in another video because i think i know how to make it uh, pretty nice like thicker so here I'm just um, laying down my first layer of all my details and I use a really um, small uh, flathead brush uh, to do the painting and I did a very small um, uh, tiny tiny brush to do detail work so here I'm just outlining with pencil my design and then I come over it with some paint and like I said before, I ran out of space to do my whole um, design on my reference paper. So I'm missing a few of the elements that I originally planned. Uh, it also helps to, when, once you have your design drawn out, you're gonna lightly erase it before you start painting it to try to get rid of some of those pencil lines. But you need to leave a little bit so that you can still see your uh, planned drawing. A thing to keep in mind as you're painting and drawing is to ignore that inner critic that's telling you, oh, you don't know how to draw or this isn't looking good. <laughs> Things are going to look wonky. You know, you can't help it. And especially when you're starting out and, you know, <laughs> like at this point, I was, there was so much self-doubt. I'm like, this is not going to look cute. This is looking awful. But this is like the beginning stages when people create paintings, it's always ugly at first. So you can see it's my cover is getting better and better. I added a second coat of that ochre color on the roof, and now I'm starting to fill in my pink hearts. So I'm seeing it come to life more and more as I, as I work. This whole process took me about probably four hours because I have four hours of video footage that I was able to condense into um, about 20 minutes. So <laughs> you're not seeing every single step, the trial and error and the um, waiting for things to dry and just getting tired, <laughs> my back going out. So now I'm gonna start on another color and I love how creamy this looks. Uh, I decided to just paint the windows blue to kind of reflect the sky outside. <laughs> Again, I'm horrible with, with illustrating houses, and that's why I had to look at a lot of references. And it's okay to do that. And I just used the books I had in my craft room. I have so many more vintage books uh, in my living room, but I could have been here forever if I went through all of them and drew out the little embellishments and features that I liked from all of them because they're all so cute. Again, I'm taking that fine liner and getting around the edges. And I thought it would be a little satisfying to show you guys the process of painting. I did paint this over several hours throughout the day and then I think I took two days to work on it. So I do have different lighting going on, so I apologize. 
So I'm making some details. I didn't want to use anything as harsh as black to make details. So I just stuck with the color of the house. I used, it looks like I've used about, uh, I used three colors. And in addition, I used white to do some small details. And if you stick to three, it's gonna look cohesive. And to stay it within that rule, I just added a little black to the blue that I'm already using. That way it doesn't look so clashy and it just, it still goes together to your eye. It, it looks good because, you know, it's really just a variation of the blue in the window. Here I tried to do a little flourish just off the top of my head. Again, I haven't referenced many of them, but I hated it. It looked like a mustache, so I added some leaves. <laughs> That's how I decided to fix it. So it kind of looks like ivy. Now I'm going through some scrapbook paper to pick out the inside cover. I'm tracing around my tag so it'll fit. I folded it in half so I only had to cut it uh, one time. Um, I usually use my rotary blade cutter, cutter for paper I have for years, but all of a sudden it's not working for me anymore. I don't know if it has to do with the rotary cutter. I changed out the blade, but that, <laughs> that didn't help. I don't know what's going on. So eventually I used my X-Acto knife to do my paper cutting. I used Fabri-Tac to attach the paper and I sprayed it with some Mod Podge matte to seal it in. And here I'm, co I'm covering the back of the cover because I didn't feel like painting it. <laughs> it was a lot of work. And it's really bright and vibrant, a lot different from the cover. <laughs> but I think it's still cute. Here I'm cutting out some chipboard or car uh, cardstock cardboard from a paper package. Uh, I'm sanding each piece so that I can glue them together. And now I'm cutting them to the width of the junk journal. And here I'm cutting the height. And it's important to know that I'm cutting the spine so that it's the height of the tag before the tag is like curved at the top, if that makes any sense. And here I glued, glued two together and now I'm trying to warp them and curl them and fold them so that I can make flaps. So here I'm attaching the other two together. So each layer was glued together with Fabri-Tac and I'm still trying to work that fold. These are gonna be flaps that I'm gonna attach the covers to. Uh, I'm picking out some fabric to glue on the outside of my spine. This is a technique I use all the time. This is how I cover my spines. I'm using Fabri-Tac again. I use Fabri-Tac for all the gluing in this project. And you can find some similar glue at Dollar Tree. I think it's called 321. I think they have that there. Now I'm cutting the insides of the spine and I'm just trimming, for, trimming them so they fit. And again, working that fold and gluing the other side. So here, once it's set, I'm, tr I'm continuing to fold and I'm going to start by gluing uh, one of the covers to that flap. And you really have to be careful to hold it in place while it sets. Cause this does take a little bit of time. When Fabri-Tac is on fabric, I find that it takes longer to dry than when it's on uh, paper. It's weird, isn't it? It's important to keep keep your spine folded like this. You don't want to unfold it because then it'll, it'll come detached from the cover. So just glue it in place just like it would be a normal book if a book was closed. Then I'm going to prepare my paper so you can see all my pretty little pastel papers. And I'm going to start by making a template for the ticket shape. Okay, so I'm tracing that the top part of the ticket and I'm going to remove those pieces. And I use a ruler to rip my paper because I wanted a rough edge in this journal. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just ripping all my edges so they look nice and frayed. So this is my template and I'm gonna use this one to um, uh, cut all the pieces. Make sure to use your original template when you're cutting all of them. If not, you'll gradually, <laughs> 
get offset if you're using the last ticket you cut to trace the next ticket if you know what I mean in succession it'll eventually change sizes and shapes here I'm just reinforcing my spine I'm gluing the fabric tack around the edges here I'm creating a template for my pamphlet stitch holes and I just I'm gonna fold it in half to find the middle and then I'm gonna fold in each side to find the middle of that because I have two signatures I want to evenly space them apart I'm gonna find the middle of that and then I'm going to find the edge for my pamphlet stitches and it's gonna be three holes so I decide to put the holes here they're evenly spaced and they're not too far to the edge of the spine they're gonna be perfectly in the center of the spine and I taped my template to the spine and that helps me keep it accurate and I'm using an awl to uh, poke holes in it. The top is usually maybe one fourth inch. I kind of use half an inch from each side, the top and the bottom. And you'll see I have six holes there and I reinforce the holes because you know it's hard to see the holes when you're poking through fabric. Here I'm arranging each paper in the signature to make sure that they're even. I clip them together. This is very important uh, to keep them together while you're um, adding your holes. I use the original template to mark where I need to poke my holes. And doing a pamphlet stitch, looking at it on a video is very difficult. Um, <laughs> but I keep my signature away from the spine while I'm doing all of my sewing. That way I see where everything is. I'm using waxed linen thread that I ordered on Etsy for this. I was wanting to use some jute twine that I found at Dollar Tree, but I totally forgot about it. But you can use um, the thin jute twine for this. That's pretty durable. You can use embroidery thread, anything. But I do find that embroidery thread can break once you go to tighten it. So just be careful of that. So in a pamphlet stitch, you're going to go um, it out through the middle and then loop from the outside to the top hole, come back inside, take the needle to the bottom stitch, loop it around <laughs> back, back into the middle. Um, and right here, I'm just adjusting, adjusting and tightening everything and you're gonna tie it up. I'm gonna do this one more time. It's still gonna be fast. I'm so sorry. I had to shorten this video, it was hours long. But you can look up many videos on how to do a pamphlet stitch. It really is super easy. So again, I'm arranging my papers and I'm gonna clip them in place and I'm gonna mark where my holes are gonna be with my template. I'm gonna thread my needle and you wanna use two times is a uh, high in length the spine is in um, the string that you're gonna use. So out through the middle, okay? And then in, th in through the top, okay? Back through the top, okay? Down to the bottom and out out through the bottom, and then you're gonna go back into the middle. It's gonna, they're gonna meet. Okay, and then you're gonna pull everything, make sure everything's tight, and then you're gonna wrap the string around the, <laughs> you're gonna wrap your tails around the string and tie a knot. <laughs> So here's the final project. I can't believe I made these out of Dollar Tree tags. Um, they're these, these wooden signs, these XOXO signs. And it, it today is the day after Valentine's Day. Tomorrow I'm gonna post this video and I hope that you can still find stuff like this at your Dollar Tree. But if not, use your imagination and your creativity and your vision and see what else you can use at Dollar Tree to make a journal. Uh, it, nothing has to be expensive in junk journaling and mixed media. So you just, just got to be creative. This was much easier than getting an old book and, and cutting it down. You'd have to have a cutter that can cut through that really thick uh, book board. So this was really cool. Each tag, if you think about it, was 75 cents a piece. 
so it's not that expensive and this is just painted with cheap paints um, with a few patterns and I use recycled board for the spine yeah so you guys tell me what you think I would love to hear what you think I had so much fun with this project I've never seen anything like this done from a Dollar Tree video for mixed media or junk journaling so I was pretty excited you can add some tassels to that top I left the hole there at the top of the tag I just ran out of energy to <laughs> keep going but you can definitely add more to it I just wanted to say that I had a really good time doing this and it wouldn't have been possible without my close friends who are always leaving such generous and sweet comments and are watching all of the whole thing, all of my videos. So I just want to give you a deep thank you and I have deep gratitude for you. I hope you guys had a good Valentine's Day and that you've had a good week so far and just remember that you are creative and that you are loved. Until next time, take care. Thank you.